Hello there. Hello, 2021 favorites. I love getting to look back on the year and the products that held their spot in my makeup bag. As usual, this is a big pick and mix of beauty snacks, fairly new finds, old flames, and makeup that just made me enjoy the ritual of getting ready this year. Really narrowed it down to 54 favorites here. I'm sure regulars will spot plenty of familiar faces, but there are also some products I've been enjoying behind the scenes. Let's meet them. I'll be covering concealer and base, Brows, bronze and glow, blush, eyeshadow, palettes, liner and mascara, lipstick, sheer shades and glosses, and brushes. I'll list discount codes below for a few of the brands in this lineup, and stay tuned for more 2021 favourites videos coming in the new year, covering skincare, hair, bath and body, lip balm, and nails beginning with base products, a few favourites that never change with some new discoveries. In the concealer category, Chanel Eclat Lumiere is still my go-to lightweight, brightening under eye concealer, sadly discontinued in some regions, so YSL Touche Eclat is its closest relative with similar results. Then Clé de Peau concealer is the best tube for spot concealing while still looking natural and creamy on the skin. It is a luxury splurge, but a little goes such a long way, so these last for years. I've never had a favourite primer before because my moisturiser and sunscreen give me a hydrated base, but the Gucci Silk Priming Serum blew me away this year. It's a very thin, light fluid that blurs texture and pores and feels like silk. So soft, stunning way to start a routine. I always like focusing on skincare and seeing my skin through makeup, just enhancing it with very light coverage and a good glow. Hello again by Terry Brightening CC Serum in Sunny Flash, a back to back to back top glowy base product for me. You can wear this alone, under makeup or mixed in. That's how I always use it, about half a pump added to the rest of my base just warms up my face slightly and gives me a glorious healthy glow. Trini London BFF Cream is another 2020 favourite that made the list again this year. This worn out tube is less about tint, all about glow. Your skin looks incredibly dewy and fresh. The greyish colour transforms to a sheer tint as you rub it in and it's an ideal no makeup makeup step. Monica Blunder, a celebrity makeup artist who often works with Gemma Chan, created Blunder Cover, an all-in-one foundation concealer hybrid. It's a lovely all-over skin fix sort of product to add sheer but buildable coverage and a creamy glow. I like applying a light layer around my T-zone and blending outwards with her brush. Discount code below. Your eyes aren't playing tricks on you. This is a foundation that's a favorite first for me, but it is also super lightweight. Gucci's Natural Finish Fluid Foundation comes in 40 shades, can be built right up to full coverage, but I use about half a pump if I'm going out and just want a little more oomph than usual. Still nice and light, skin-like and long-wearing. One repeat pencil and a terrific new shaping trio for really lifted, almost laminated brows. My Charlotte Tilbury Brow Lift Pencil is still going strong. Her brow range was revamped this year and now comes in refillable packaging. My shade supermodel is called Dark Brown. My brows are quite thick and dark anyway, so I just use this creamy wide tip for light shading all over. The Patrick Ta Major Brow Shaping Wax in Tinted was the first brow wax I ever tried and I loved the result. Just spray some water then gently rub a spoolie across the surface. I just used whatever brow product spoolie is nearby. It kept my brows reaching straight for the sky and feels a bit more defined than brow gel results. Back to brow gels though with Espresso's Hey Bro Clear Gel, a new launch from the playful, minimal makeup brand from Milan. This is a water-based gel, so it's quite wet when you first apply it, but it sets in a couple of minutes and stays all day. Espresso discount below. The brow product that had the biggest hold on me, pun intended, was Refi Brow Sculpt. I shared a Refi brand overview this year, but this was the product that stayed in my routine. A powerful, sticky gel slash glue that you apply, then brush through with the comb or brush inside the cap, and it dries clear. Initially, I preferred the comb, but the brush has grown on me too. This lifts my brows like no other product I've tried. A couple of powder and cream bronze and glow bits. Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow is a very old flame I fell for again. I've had this for years but rediscovered it and kept reaching for the bronzing side. This is neutral enough to work as a contour on me as well as a bronzer and I'd often do a quick swipe on the eyes too. 
Bringing back a 2019 favourite, I still think the Undone Beauty Water Bronzer is one of the best barely there bronzers out there. It looks dark, but it's so sheer, you can keep swiping, but you won't overdo it. Very user-friendly, looks realistic, and I like the fresh, cool feel on the skin. In terms of glow, Lisa Eldridge's Elevated Glow Highlighter in Cosmic Rose is radiant. A highlighter skincare hybrid that's pearly, my go-to so it's not too shimmery or glittery. This light rosy champagne stays slightly tacky like hydrated, dewy skin. Gorgeous. Charlotte Tilbury's Beauty Light Wands were sold out everywhere thanks to TikTok, but I've been a fan since 2017 and got back into them. The original bright pearly champagne spotlight can't be beaten for a glamorous glow, but it is thin so it shears out nicely too. The best bit, cream blush. Some new launches and some carryover champs. My favourite blush formula from last year is back in a different shade. Danessa Myrick's Vision Flush in Bread and Butter was my most used blush by a mile. It's a dream multitasker for cheeks, eyes and lips, pigmented but shears out beautifully and leaves a fresh glow. This is called a natural pink, like a peachy deep rose to wake up your cheeks. Well, the M Cosmetics Serum Blushes were finally bumped off my favourites list by M Cosmetics Stick Blushes. The new So Soft formula is fabulous, with a luminous satin finish and moussey texture that blends seamlessly, so these are very approachable despite being so pigmented. Can't go past Venetian Rose, the brand's famous antique rich rose. A last minute but brilliant blush stick arrival, Victoria Beckham Cheeky Posh. Didn't take long to know that I loved this formula. Creamy, glowy, easy to blend, everything I want a blush stick to be. I was nervous Playground, this mid-tone terracotta nude, might be too orange. Not at all, it has a touch of rose so it's a superb sun-kissed shade. Just looks more orange here because the other two are really rosy. Sometimes I toned things down with this Trini London Flush Blush in Electra. This is such a soft, muted, barely there blossom pink that it almost has a sculpting effect on the cheeks. I thought a really pale colour like this might be wishy-washy, but it's so pretty and fresh with a great creamy texture. A much bolder berry and another 2020 favourite that stuck around. The Charlotte Tilbury Lip and Cheek Glow in Colour of Passions is a balmy cream blush with more slip on the surface and a really dewy finish on the skin. This is a wonderful windswept sort of colour that looks lovely patted onto lips as well. Let's take a quick look at a more sheer version of these shades the way I really wear them. Here are the everyday eyeshadow shades I reached for regularly. Meet the best launch of the year in my opinion, the best liquid shadow I've ever tried, and the product I'd pick if I could only choose one favourite this year. The Rare Beauty Stay Vulnerable liquid shadows are perfect. A muted petal shade range swatched in a previous video, a creamy texture that builds and blends evenly, shears out easily, doesn't crease, doesn't dry too quickly, but doesn't move once it sets. It ticks every box. I'm addicted to Nearly Rose, a tea rose pink and an excellent entry level pink shadow. Nearly Apricot is a sun drenched peach, big peachy shadow person as well. And Nearly Neutral is described as a warm neutral beige. Obsessed with them all. The Sunny's Face eye crayons come in a chic colour gradient to more of a toasty fall family and Jujube was the one I grabbed a lot. This is called a berry mauve but it almost shears out to be a dusty salmon pink on me so it worked well with my most worn blushes. Creamy and easy to blend or swipe it along the lash line as a fun liner. Violette FR's brand launch was a big moment in 2021 and despite a bit of a rocky brand review video, you'll have to watch to see how pigmented these are, I found myself reaching for her Year Paint in To Do quite often. The smallest dot creates a really nice tan shadow once you master how to blend it quickly. The cheerful Colourpop Colour Sticks Crayon Day Date was another highlight. Really like wearing this as a pop of vibrant pinky coral eyeliner. There's a little sharpener hiding in the bottom to keep the point precise. The matte formula is creamy and glides right on. Colourpop code below. A much more subtle stick was the Chanel Stilo Ombre et Contour in Nude Eclat. This warm pinky champagne gold narrow crayon works a treat as an inner corner highlight. I even take it in a little further, a third of the way along my top lash line to brighten up my eyes. 
It wouldn't be my makeup routine without wearing a non eyeshadow product on my eyes. Trini London's The Right Light is a cream highlighter, but the shade Firelight, described as a warm fireside glow, also says eyeshadow to me. It's a natural tan meets gold for subtly enhanced eyes. Does it crease? Yep, creams usually do. Do I mind? No. Three palettes I enjoyed when I wanted more definition than a one and done shadow. Dior Mitza from my Autumn Makeup Edit was a colour scheme that really captivated me, described as leopard-like browns and golds. This mixture of soft, easy, everyday shimmers and deeper, dramatic shades is so versatile. Sneaking the berry metallic along my bottom lash line to make my eyes pop was one of my top tricks. I've had a decade-long love affair with Chanel's eyeshadow quads. They come up with dreamy seasonal colour combinations, but spring 2021 felt like a personal attack because it was all coppery, peachy, pinky, rusty, terracotta tones. Oof. It is a little tricky to find Golden Meadow now, but they do have other combos that capture this sort of colour theme. It struck me while I was using Charlotte Tilbury's Hollywood Flawless Eye Filter Palette Star Aura that this is basically a perfect, glamorous, yet easy eye palette with soft, satiny metallics. There's a light pink to wear as a base all over the lid, a taupey light bronze to add depth in the crease, a deeper, glowy chocolate to define the lash line, and a pop of champagne gold for the inner corners. Done. Moving on to mascara and one eyeliner. I usually used a darker shadow shade along the lash line this year, but the Victoria Beckham liner Bordeaux was what I went for if I wanted more oomph. A lot more oomph, in fact. This delicious deep burgundy is very soft, so it's easy to smudge or draw stronger lines. Now mascaras, in ascending order from subtle to super. Despite usually loving a lot of volume in this area, I loved the 1999 Beauty Lash Tint Mascara for a much more subtle no mascara mascara effect. This tubing formula with a delicate, dainty, slim little wand mimics the look of fluttery, freshly tinted lashes. An ideal bottom lash mascara too. Discount details below. I got right into the Dior Show Iconic Overcurl Mascara around the middle of the year after reporting on it in my Olivia Rodrigo makeup bag video. This is a good middle ground mascara. The curved wand lifts my lashes and adds depth, definition and volume, but it's not too over the top. But Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Push Up Lashes does not hold back. This was a 2020 favourite as well. I called it a showstopper and it's still what I use when I want the most volume. The spiky sides add length, then the flat sides dial up the drama. When I was lining up these lipsticks, I suddenly realised just how much of a rosy, berry, nude sort of mood I'd been in. Pretty ridiculous how close these colours are. Lots of natural, my lips but better sort of shades that were probably subconsciously mask related. They felt like a nice boost but weren't high maintenance to wear. Chanel's Rouge Allure Lac Shade Ultimate was my ultimate lip colour this year. Long wearing and shine don't normally go together, but somehow this formula works. It stays a little bit tacky to preserve the slight sheen, but not in a sticky or uncomfortable way. This muted mauve rose feels elegant and sophisticated, but also casual enough to enjoy every day. Ended up buying a few more colours in this formula. Fancy seeing another Bobbi Brown crush lip colour here. You know I love these easy lipsticks for a blotted matte look. Italian Rose is one of the real nudes editions and this warm brown rose is another excellent My Lips But Better everyday colour. Worth noting the waxy citrusy scent doesn't bother me at all but I know some people aren't a fan. I have to thank slash blame my Instagram follower Sarah for my new Givenchy La Rouge Sheer Velvet obsession. She told me about this formula and said, imagine Bobbi Brown's crushed lip colour but in a pair of black heels. This is like a grown up version with a much more velvety feel and a blurred, diffused, soft focus finish. Nude Boise is a neutral beige powdery pink, well worth the lengths I went to to find it in stock. It only took one swipe of Victoria Beckham's new posh lipstick shade Spark to realise I'd found a fantastic effortless colour, partly due to the formula, creamy slash balmy and so comfortable, but also because I just love mid-tone warm roses like this that are a touch deeper than my lips. 
a liquid lipstick. Can you believe it? I'm a changed woman thanks to Rouge Dior Forever Liquid. This is not a flat, dry, paint-like liquid lip. It's thin, so you can customize the strength of the color. A little tacky initially, but when it dries down, I cannot feel it and it stays put. 100 Forever Nude is a forever flattering deep nude pink. A Charlotte Tilbury lipstick of some sort has to be in my end of year videos. I finally got around to swatching my collection of creamy matte revolution shades this year and found myself reaching for an oldie walk of shame or walk of night shame. A stronger rosy berry just to really mix things up. But wait there's more. Two lip liner colours caught my eye too. Another Olivia Rodrigo inspired Dior product. The lip liner shade 772 Classic also comes in a matte lipstick, but I used the liner more often, just softly lining the edges, filling in my lips messily and blending with lip balm. It's called a deep pink nude, but it's almost a bricky, rosy, berry red. Much earlier in the year, I was really into Gucci's liner shade Tendre. This is more of a traditional pencil with a firmer point, but it still feels smooth and long wearing. It's described as rosewood, but I guess we could call it a warm, rusty berry in comparison to Dior. A few balmy and glossy lip products to wrap up this category. The new Dior Lip Glow in Mahogany instantly became the best lip glow shade, I think, and the new formula is a vast improvement. Lighter, less sticky, just smooth and balmy with great shine. A terrific sheer deep pink meets chocolate tint. It ticks that black honey type of box. Thank you for making that my most popular video of the year. Another member of the Bobbi Brown Crushed family here, this time the Crushed Shine Jelly Stick, a sheer but quite buildable balmy formula with soft shine. It's meant to be a popsicle slick of colour, but I find it surprisingly pigmented. Honey is a peachy nude caramel to pop on in a hurry. I'm a big fan of Gucci's lip formulas, but the skinny Glow and Care was the winner for me this year. It's definitely related to the sheer Gucci lipsticks I love, but it has a thicker texture and a lot more shine. I swatched the range earlier, but my cousin Rachel is my personal pale peach pick. Fit Glow Lip Serum is leading the gloss group, a glorious gloss because it has a cushiony gel-like quality so the texture feels so good, quite different to a regular slippy or sticky glosses. I enjoy a lot of their shades but Beach Glow is beautiful. Sheer shimmery bronze sounds like an eyeshadow description but this is so flattering, not too glittery when it's on, just shiny. Two repeat glosses to wrap this up. A mini Kosas Wet Lip Oil Gloss in Jellyfish was hiding in the bottom of my bag for months. This thin formula feels like a lip oil, so it's comfy on its own or over lipstick. Then this By Terry Bomb de Rose Liquid is one of many minis I've used up. My favourite gloss that puts in the work. It's the liquid version of their famous Balm Pot, so it's lighter and shinier but still feels nourishing. More lip balms coming in my skincare favourites in the new year. Finishing with some of my most used brushes. Refer 01 is what you'll usually find me using for powder shadow. It's a fantastic fluffy blending shape that can pack on colour or smudge it out. Rowan's Everything Eye Brush does what it says, a really handy domed shape. I particularly like using the smaller end to mimic liner with a dark shadow or doing a bit of sneaky smoking under my lower lash line. Charlotte Tilbury's Powder and Sculpt Brush is a small tapered shape for soft contouring and bronzing with her Filmstar Bronze and Glow Powder. Monica Blunder's Hybrid Cream Brush works so well with Blunder Cover. It helps cream products apply evenly with a skin-like finish. And another base brush that made an impression, which is saying something because I usually like applying base with my fingers, was Merit's Number no. One Brush. Dense, yet so soft, so it almost mimics fingertips. Oh, I need a nap after that. Actually, I think we just all need a nap after 2021, really. Thank you for watching if you made it all the way to the end. I cannot wait to hear about your 2021 favourites. Please share your best discoveries, fun rediscoveries, new brands, old loves, launches that made an impression. Did you also accidentally love five lipsticks that were basically the same? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for your support this year. I've loved seeing this community continue to grow. It's such a pleasure to be able to create a nice little beauty escape for you whenever you need it. If you'd like to take a trip down makeup memory lane, my previous favourites from 2017 onwards are linked below. Looking forward to a fresh start in 2022 and all of the beauty finds that may come our way. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the rest of my 2021 favourites videos coming in a few weeks after I take a break. Lots of topics on my filming list for next year, if not the next decade, but I'd love to hear what you'd like to see too. Happy New Year!
Thanks for watching. See you next time.